It is 6.02, so we will get started. So good evening, TNA High School family. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we are going to go ahead and, and, and present some information that I know that many of you may have some questions for at the end. Uh, we will also take some time to answer some questions. You have the ability to put your questions in the chat. Uh, we will do our best to answer them to the full of our, fullest of our ability. Uh, the panel, I thank you once again. Uh, we have Mr. Justin O'Neill, Assistant Principal, Ms. Margot Tadman Mack, another Assistant Principal, Ms. Melissa Simmons, the Business Administrator for the District, as well as Mr. Mohamed Saleh, the Director of Technology. So thank you all for joining us. So again, this evening, we're going to cover uh, the phased in approach, um, the reintroduction to the buildings uh, for this upcoming January, as well as the hybrid model, cohort one and cohort two. Those are named cohort one and cohort two at the present time. That name may change. Uh, so just in terms of identification, we're gonna call them for the head this evening, cohort one and cohort two, as well as the hybrid cohort schedule for the, for the high school. Um, next steps in joining the building, as well as we're gonna review some of the expectations from the teachers and the lesson planning and the lesson delivery. Uh, what you need to do, what we need to do in preparation for the return and some expectations for our return. So going to the, the uh, Dr. Irving and the, and the central office team's plan, as well as ours, um, beginning Monday, January, I'm sorry, I'm wrong page, Mon Monday, January 11th, uh, two programs will be reintroduced to the high school. Uh, those programs being the THS STARS program, which will have the opportunity to uh, attend school Monday through Friday, five days a week, as well as our MD programs. They will have the opportunity to attend school uh, four days a week, which is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, with Wednesday being a deep cleaning session. Uh, again, these are the, the original uh, classes that were going to be phased back in in the phase one approach uh, that we had uh, that was shelved in November, and we are reintroducing those students to the building as of January 11th. <clears throat> Excuse me. Phase two will begin on Monday, January 25th. That's when all students, it's actually one through 12, but for the focus of the high school, we're just focusing on nine through 12, have the ability to return to the high school in a cohort model. We'll get into more detail exactly what that cohort model will look like. That cohort model will allow them the opportunity to, to attend school in person twice a week, either Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday um, for that remainder of the third marking period. Again, they would all come in, they will all be identified for either cohort one or cohort two. The hybrid model in more detail combines in-person with virtual instruction. So what that means, if you are identified to be a member of cohort one, you will attend school on Monday, Tuesday. If you are, and, and cohort two will be experiencing virtual uh, learning, synchronous learning. We'll get, again, get into more detail. The names of the distinction of cohort one and cohort two again may be changed. Uh, at the present time, we're just using those two terms to identify those. Students will follow an alternating schedule. Again, once uh, two days in person, two days synchronous at home. Uh, right now, the cohorts are separated by alphabet. Uh, we're roughly about 1,211 students currently. We have uh, separated the students into A through L and M through Z, and it's actually given us a pretty close breakdown uh, in terms of 600 and some on for each cohort. Uh, once again, once you are in person, the other cohort will be learning virtual, and then you would flip, or the students will flip on Thursday and Friday. The cohorts are identified by the names and family skyward. Um, that will give us the ability to make sure that entire families have the, the same cohort. So all students will be going to school and attending school on a regular basis, on the same days, I'm sorry. Now, Mr. O'Neill, uh, you will take the next couple of pages. Good evening, everyone. I uh, hope this, uh, we find you well. Uh, I'm actually just gonna go through a couple of these slides and uh, we're gonna actually start off with uh, the in-person instruction via cohorts. Uh, cohort one, which is again tentatively named, um, will attend in-person instruction on Monday and Tuesdays. And cohort two, which again may change names, uh, will attend in-person instruction on Thursday and Friday. Uh, that allows us to keep the middle of the week, Wednesday, open for an all virtual day in order to allow for an intensive cleaning of the school. As we all know, that is incredibly important um, as we move forward. And all students will follow the current instructional schedule. So again, the current schedule will stay intact and remain with their current teachers, regardless of in-person or remote instruction. And just to go through uh, the schedule, uh, hopefully it is clear to you. Um, 
the hybrid schedule as or the cohort schedule. Uh, as I just shared, uh, you can see here on the visual, it is split into uh, two days in a row, on Monday and Tuesday for uh, cohort A, uh, oh, sorry, cohort one. Um, and then Wednesday is a eight period day. Um, the second half of the week, Thursday and Friday is for, that is the second cohort and they will attend in-person instruction. Um, just so you, and you can all see there that how the, uh, the periods break down. Each period is an hour long uh, with a, a lunch break at 1230, which is followed by small group instruction and uh, office hours where students can attend uh, with their teachers, either uh, whether they're invited or they just need to drop in. And again, you can see that Wednesday is a virtual day and all eight periods are represented um, with a, uh, again, afternoon hours as well for um, small group uh, enrichment um, as well as a district-wide tutoring program. So our next steps as we plan for the reopening, uh, if you choose to have your child remain remote for either phase one or phase two, um, the complete hybrid learning remote only option uh, will, that form, so there will be a hybrid learning remote only option registration form uh, that needs to be completed by December 18th. And that will allow us to know whether you indicate your decision to, uh, for your child to, or children to continue with the remote learning process. If you chose to have your child or children attend school via the hybrid model, the cohort model, uh, in person on the two assigned days, then no further action is required to be taken. Keep in mind your child's current schedule will not change. Um, if you do not complete the hybrid learning remote only option registration form, your child will automatically be enrolled in the hybrid model. Um, to attend school in person on their two assigned days. Uh, this includes pre-K and kindergarten students uh, for the January 11th, 2021 return. Families who select the hybrid model, which is the in-person um, on their assigned two days and wish to switch to all remote learning must email the following email there, counseling at teenexschools.org, three school days in advance of the date you choose to have your child or children learn remotely. Uh, also keep in mind an email will be sent to parents and guardians confirming the switch. Families who select remote learning must remain remote for the remainder of the third marking period, which entails January 25th uh, through March 31st, 2021. Uh, marking period four, uh, to opt out for the all remote learning option, registration will open up on March 1st, 2021. Notification will be sent out in advance. Uh, and of course, you know, due to COVID-19, uh, all phased in, in plans are subject to change uh, based on how things are going. Ms. Mack, would you like to take the next? Sure. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. So I will be speaking about uh, instruction, uh, giving a little bit of a deeper dive uh, so you all can understand what our daily instruction will look like. So starting the lesson. A teacher may begin the lesson by both addressing both in-person and remote learners synchronously. This synchronous or direct instruction will be focused on subject or specific objective or standards. It may also be an explanation of the day's learning and or modeling of a process, task, or assignment. Remote learners will be able to watch the teacher synchronously through the use of the Hovercam, which is the Hovercam camera, um, and a Google meeting. In-person learners will watch the live instruction from their desks. Working through the lesson. Teachers will determine the best instructional method to employ to ensure that students learn the material. Teachers may create small groups of learners to collaborate, work with students individually, or pair students strategically. Remote and in-person learners will be able to collaborate and work with their peers in real time through the use of the Google Suite tools, such as Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Meets. So feedback, what does feedback look like in this hybrid uh, model? Both in-person and remote learners will receive real-time feedback in multiple ways. 
teacher, a teacher may move about in a Google breakout room, albeit virtually, to listen to conversations and to provide real-time feedback. A teacher may provide feedback to students by accessing and commenting on a shared Google Doc or slides. We also have other uh, forms of uh, instructional models, um, or I should say tools like Peer Deck, Nearpod, um, those will also be used as well. Students may provide feedback to one another through peer-to-peer -peer discussions via Google Meets, collaboration on shared documents, and or Google Comments on shared documents. Community building. What does community build, building look like in this hybrid model? So irrespective of location, the goal of the hybrid learning model is to sustain the learning community that has been developed within our classes since September. To do this, classes may do the following. Begin each day or period with a class meeting or opening activity focused on creating community by way of discussion, a collaboration activity, or social emotional, aka SEL, check-in to ensure student wellness for both in-person and remote learners. Preparing to return. Because all uh, of our, our lessons are housed in Google Classroom, in-person um, instructors will definitely need to do the following, and this information is key. Their one-to-one -one devices with chargers um, need to be charged every day, aka their Chromebooks. Families are strongly encouraged to charge devices at night. Students will need their Chromebooks or laptops. Cell phones will not be per permitted in the learning environment in the building. So it's essential that again, uh, the Chromebook or personal laptop that the student chooses to use is charged at night. Okay, I think Mr. Valdez. Oh, sorry, two more important things. Uh, textbooks, learning resources, and note notebooks need to come to school every day. Uh, I think Mr. Valdez will be getting into it, but students will not be uh, permitted to use lockers. So it's essential that they are with the students in their personal bags. Um, and obviously, um, face masks and facial coverings will be uh, required every day throughout the day. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Um, it's obvious that uh, the, the times are different. Uh, education is different. We've all been home. We were dying to get back into the building. However, once we get back into the building, it's not gonna be uh, same old same. Um, teachers and students will have to remain socially distant. Uh, teachers themselves will not be able to have the ability to go over met for a student's shoulder um, and, and pretty much one-on-one -on -one conference. Uh, so that's why it's, cr it's critical that the Google Chromebooks and all those uh, devices come to school with them because they would actually have to deliver some of that instruction through the Google Classroom, even though they are in person. Some of the expectations that we have uh, coming back and what it's gonna look like. Um, so the students will be assigned specific doors to enter the building just to, to assist us with uh, crowd control, if, if, if for less uh, better terms. Um, so each grade specific will have a door to enter the building. Um, students will not be able to use lockers nor locker rooms, so they would have to take their items with them every day uh, to every period. There will be a limited number of students in the restrooms for uh, just again to promote social distancing. Um, so we're going to limit it to two uh, students in a restroom at a time. Uh, masks must be worn at all times throughout the course of the building, uh, traveling, in classes, so on and so forth. And again, the high school is different. The high school has 12, 1,211 students at the current time um, with over 120 staff members. Uh, we do not have the ability to sort of contain or cohort the students in just specific areas. So they will be asked to travel through the building as well as the teachers will have to travel through the building. So that's why masks at this time must be worn at all times. Um, again, they will travel through their regular schedule, uh, one through eight, one through four on day one or, or day A, and then four through uh, five through eight on B day. Um, they will have opportunities to disinfect their workstations every period. Desks will be alternated by period, meaning if a first period class, remember we have a limited number of students in the building. So first period classes uses the uh, every other desk uh, remaining social distance second period class will use the other desk uh, again continuing to remain uh, socially distant um, hand signing sanitizing stations are throughout the building uh, we will limit the movement in physical education classes uh, so that will look different as well you know basketball and volleyball and those sports will not be able to be played at this present time there may be more uh, spiritual and uh, yoga and training and facilities and we will definitely go outside as much as we can the dismissal uh, is at 1230. There will be a grab and go option for lunch. Students will be able to grab lunch on their way out of the building. Um, 
that 12.30 to 1.30 window during lunch is also travel time. If they are scheduled for enrichment periods in that afternoon, they are expected to be home within that hour online and meeting with their teachers during that, during that enrichment period. Um, students will be just seated once again, socially distanced, and students should bring headphones for in-person instruction whenever available. Here's some of the, the images taken from the building. Um, these are the signings that you will find throughout the building. These are desks uh, within classrooms. The, the, the items to the left or the top left picture, uh, the film is not removed off of those, uh, those plexiglass barriers as of yet. If you look to the bottom right, they are uh, removed. So that's what our students will look like uh, when they come and many of the signs that they will see. Now is our opportunity for questions. I can stop sharing. I know we threw a lot of information at you. I'm sure that there are a number of questions and we'll do our best to answer them. That's good. Uh, first question is, is regarding the schedule and the four hour, four days per week and the hours, um, uptick in the amount of homework and the stress and significant decreases in teacher interaction uh, how can they maintain the rest of the year? And how can they learn enough to stay on track? Um, again, the, the schedule right now is, it's, it's not only a four hour day, the, every student should be uh, scheduled for enrichment time with their, with their teacher. They will not always meet every day, but at the same time, they do have that opportunity and they will be pulled in from time to time. Office hours as well, the, the instructional time is reduced. Um, that is obvious just because of the schedule. The teachers are working diligently to make sure that the, uh, big ticket items, I guess you can call them, or we'll call them for now, for the lack of better words, are definitely being uh, taught to these students. Are the small group periods in, in person? Great question. Uh, the, the school will, will dismiss at 1230. Um, so the students, again, will have the opportunity to travel between the hours of 1230 and one to make it home and have lunch. If they are assigned for an afternoon period, enrichment period with their teachers, uh, they will be back online virtually at 1.30. Any update on winter sports, i.e. swimming? There was a, a communication release from the NJSIAA. They have pushed back some of the dates in terms of when they will begin. We can share that documentation with you. Um, will still students carry the plexiglass with them from class to class? Great question. I know that was originally stated. Um, no, but Ms. Simmons has afforded us the almost plexiglass for every desk. Uh, so we are outfitting the majority of desks in the building with the plexiglass. They will not need to carry them with them from period to period. Students were told that they do not need to attend small groups unless specifically asked by the teacher. So there's only four hours per work per period. Um, again, yes, there, there is the, the enrichment periods are not for everybody all the time. Um, there are some, some days that they will be asked to, to return at said time. Um, so I guess we did uh, identify the, that. Can you describe what you see? Um, again, the, the, the question here is about the return and, and, and the dead of winter and the hour uh, schedule. Uh, again, this was a district board decision. Uh, we're doing everything in our power to make sure that they are supported and the students are supported as well. So we are here to make sure that the, the, we can do everything we can to maintain their safety and make sure that they um, have the ability to return to the buildings. How many students per classroom? Good question. Um, right now, uh, the, the cohorts are being drilled down into three different uh, sections. So first it was easy, it was, you know, 600, 600 was easy. And then uh, making sure that we match up the families including them in the, in the same cohort. After that, we have to drill down even further and see what the classroom enrollment looks like. But again, this is all contingent on the number of students that are returning to school in person. Um, until we get that registration done, we really wouldn't have hard fact numbers in terms of how many students are in each uh, section or each classroom. And I find the hybrid learning remote only option registration in the Tina School website. It was the, uh, the registration form was distributed yesterday um, from the guidance department. There was an email sent from the guidance department. We will go ahead and put that on the website to make it easier access. Um, and I can also send it out to all families. Great question. Can you cho choose remote uh, for the next quarter and hybrid for the final quarter? Yes, you may. Uh, Mr. O'Neill touched upon that. If you choose uh, remote now for third market period, you do have the ability beginning in March to register for a hybrid option. Uh, who is supervising the cleaning of the desk to ensure adherence to COVID protocol? Uh, again, great question. Uh, the, the staff will be trained on, on, on proper 
uh, cleaning techniques um, and ensure that the, uh, we do everything in terms of touch points uh, to the disinfecting of the areas. Um, so the days uh, they will be in school until 1230, only those two days, correct. So in the hybrid model, uh, there's in-person instruction, first two days of the week and virtual instruction, the last two days of the week or vice versa, depending on the cohort that you've been designated. Students are remaining virtual only. How do teachers ensure that they stay on track and not get left behind, especially if there's technical glitches? Uh, that is one, one of the conundrums. Uh, the teachers, are, like I said, are working diligently to ensure uh, that they, they deliver the best instruction that they can. Uh, they will do everything in their power to ensure technical glitches are going on now. The pacing is going to be the same if you're virtual or in person. Uh, the same lesson is being delivered on a daily basis. If you have technical issues uh, during that said time, I would really, really stress to make sure that you make office hours. The office hours for all teachers are daily for an hour, um, and they can really make sure that if, if you had a technical glitch during that period, that you were caught up. Students being assessed prior to entering the building. Um, are all staff and students being assessed prior to entering the building? Example, temperature checks or recent travel. Um, I'll touch upon that. And then if Melissa, you want to jump in. Uh, currently, there will be a wellness check that all staff and students will have to uh, complete. Um, there is going to be an onus also on the staff and students that if you're sending your child to school, they have cleared that, that wellness check and that temperature check. Um, in, in terms of being ready to school, ready to, to learn and ready to come to school and are not at risk. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Ms. Simmons? Um, yes. So the expectation from um, all parents and guardians is to um, take your child's temperature and assess their, um, their health on a daily basis. We are encouraging every parent to and guardian, if, if necessary, for whatever reason, the child isn't um, doesn't feel well enough to come to school that you um, keep them home. Um, we are stressed in that and so the onus is on everybody, student and staff, to do this wellness check. We will attempt to um, do spot checking of temperatures on a daily basis so it will not be all staff or all students but um, we would have um, places set up for them to, for us to do spot checks. However, if your student um, shows up at school and has not participated in that wellness check, they'll be um, sent to what we call the waiting area until that, um, that um, daily wellness check is done for them. So we encourage you so that your child doesn't lose any um, critical instruction time for you to do that prior to them arriving. The emails will be sent out on a daily basis by 5 a.m. You will have the email in order for you as parent or guardian to complete that wellness check. And um, it literally takes about 30 seconds once you do that. So, um, so yes, everybody will be assessed prior to entering the building on a daily basis. Thank you, Mr. Valdez. Thank you, Ms. Simmons. Um, what happens if we get a few students to come? Say, for example, only four students in the class, will you continue? Uh, again, we're going to have it's we have we're going to have to assess exactly everything that's going on, the enrollment in per se a class. Uh, four students in a class is only one period of the day, uh, for most part. So, like we said, our students are going to be attending four periods during the the, the course of the day. So, just because they have four uh, classmates in one class doesn't mean that the next class will look similar to that. So, we do have to assess it once we get that information back. Uh, December eighteenth is too soon to decide. For virtual, I need more details. Disinfecting the chairs, rooms, classrooms. Um, what about air filters? Uh, we have all the air filters have been checked and uh, rated, uh, Ms. Simmons, correct? Um, and they have met the, uh, the qualifications or, or the desired by the um, CDC. I don't know if you want to add to that, Ms. Simmons? Sure. Um, every classroom that um, a student or staff person will be in is outfitted with what we call unit ventilators. Each unit ventilator is able to bring in fresh air regularly into the classroom and rotate that air, which is one of the requirements that is recommended that we bring in fresh air um, on a consistent basis into all of the classrooms and areas. Um, for those areas, those larger areas, we've um, outfitted some of those with some of those MERV 13 filters that you've heard about, but those are usually in the larger areas like our gymnasium, auditorium, and lunch areas. So, um, but we have um, met all of those requirements and 
in order to maintain that fresh air um, process, we start those air filtration systems two hours before school starts and we turn them off two hours after school starts so that the air is constantly flowing within all of the classrooms and areas in the building. Thank you, Ms. Simmons. Is the intervention period currently on the schedule the same as the enrichment period? Yes, uh, it is the same as the enrichment period. Actually, we think that we changed the terminology of the intervention and called it enrichment. So if you have the intervention period, that is an older copy of the schedule. We originally told Wednesdays were virtual for everyone and just found out that they actually had no school on all at Wednesdays. Um, that was all, all last Wednesday was um, a, virtu a asynchronous day due to staff uh, testing when uh, Dr. Irving originally had slated that when we had the original return to school plan. Wednesdays are synchronous learning, periods one through eight, uh, so there will be live instruction on Wednesdays. Um, when in person, will students be logging on to the Google Classmates to meet as a larger group, cohort, or remote? And will feedback with multiple Chromebooks at the same location be minimum with the use of headphones in the classroom? Uh, yes, uh, many times the, the students that are in the room will be asked to log on to the Google Classroom uh, because that's where the wor work will be embedded. And the question about the headphones, yes, the headphones will assist us uh, with reducing the feedback and, and students being able to listen and pay closer attention. Are we requiring students to take COVID tests? If not, why not? Um, many people are asymptomatic, so temperature checks are not conclusive. Um, Ms. Simmons, you want to touch upon the COVID test for the students? Sure. Um, we, um, as a district, we have many people who help us. We are currently working with three specific doctors. Um, the doctors are all in agreement that um, taking temperatures of students are not, is really not going to, um, is not going to allow us to know with any certainty if they are um, asymptomatic or, or um, don't have um, any signs of COVID. However, that wellness check that you as parents are and guardians are going to fill out on a daily basis will um, help us to assess those children. Um, that's why that um, when you see the wellness checks, you'll see how many questions it asks because is collectively those symptoms do outline and do alert parents and guardians to the signs of COVID-19. So that's why it's so important for us to fill that out. And unanimously, all of the doctors that, and nurses that we are working for all agree that that is the best way to assess um, any, a child or a staff person's health. So that's why we're relying very heavily on you as parents and guardians to complete that wellness check on a daily basis. And we encourage you, if that child is, for any reason, so, um, showing signs of any of those symptoms um, that are listed on that wellness check, we keep that student home and then seek um, medical attention and, and, and information from your doctor. Um, so again, that is what we stress. That is what has been recommended, um, not just from our doctors, from the CDC, and also from the governor's office, which requires wellness checks. Um, um, as a part of the process that he recommends for school students and staff. Thank you once again, Ms. Simmons. Uh, will desks be disaffected between each group of students entering the classroom throughout the day? Yes. Are these filters in the HVAC system or standalone filters? Um, the filters that, that Ms. Simmons was touching upon are actually in the system. Uh, some rooms may have the ability to get additional filters. Um, will teachers be simultaneously teaching in person or remote students? what technology is being provided to make this successful. Uh, the simultaneous teaching is a difficult task, uh, without a doubt. The hover cams are giving us the opportunity to stream the classroom lesson um, in real time to the students at home. Are there classrooms without windows? If so, are those classrooms being used? Yes, there are classrooms uh, in the interior of the building without windows. Uh, again, the the rating on those filters and the, and the systems were approved and cleared um, so that the, the exchange in air is, is safe to return. Will the teachers be in school? Um, yes, the teachers will be here uh, every day but Wednesday. Um, where is the form to opt out to stay virtual? Uh, again, um, the, the form we will place on the website, but at the same time, it was emailed uh, from the guidance department yesterday. So if you received an email from the guidance department yesterday, um, towards the bottom of that, there is a, a hyperlink in blue of the form, both in Spanish and English. 
It's a Google Doc that you can submit. Um, and that, again, is, is registering your child to stay virtual. If you want your child to return to school, there is nothing that you need to do. Um, but if you want your child to stay virtual, you have to submit that form by Friday. Um, what would be the plan if someone tests positive? Um, that's a multi-tiered approach again. I don't know if you want to touch upon that, uh, Ms. Simmons, uh, but the, it will be, uh, depending on the room and the exposure uh, and the contact with the health department, will we'll pretty much dictate exactly what steps the school has to take. Uh, how would the kids eat lunch? They would need to take off their masks. Everyone eats at lunch at 12, 20, 1230. Uh, students are dismissed at 1230. There's a grab and go option. So they will not be eating lunch in the building. Um, that 1230 to 130 is lunchtime as well as travel time. So they have the ability to grab lunch and exit the building or on their, on their exit of the building and then eat it on their way home. Will extra help hours still be available? Definitely. We have uh, not only the enrichment periods, but we have the office hours till 325. And then there is the district-wide tutoring program until 430. So there are definitely many opportunities for assistance and extra help. Um, if your student in, is particularly is looking for something, reach out to any of us, send us an email. We'll make sure to link them up with the, the uh, support that they need uh, to assist them in being successful. Will guidance counselors be on site or they will be remote? Guidance counselors will be on site. Um, the building will be opening uh, to full capacity in terms of teaching. Um, so all the teachers and support staff will be returning to the building as uh, once we open. Can I post a be, uh, presentation from the beginning? Yes, ma'am, definitely. The presentation will be posted. Um, the man behind the curtain is going to assist us with that. We will definitely put it on the website as well as uh, any other documentation. Um, how will contact tracing work if a family member tests positive? Um, I'm not sure exactly which direction that question is going. Again, the, the Board of Health um, and the CDC have specific uh, questions. Uh, Ms. Simmons and Mr. Cox facilitate that process within the district. If a family member tests positive, then, then there is, a, depending on the first or second level contact, there are questions asked to that family member and the student if they were in and out of school and who they came across. And then there is a um, sort of a tiered approach of how we would handle that uh, and what steps need to be taken that are predetermined, like I said, not only by the Board of Health, the CDC, but as well as the, uh, the district. I think that's it. All right. Um, well, again, you know, just to reiterate, uh, school is going to look a bit different. You know, we're excited to get everybody back, but you know, with your patience and our partner and partnership in education, we can definitely make it work. There's going to be some some um, sacrifices made by the students. You know, in terms of just having to navigate a little bit differently. Um, the, the structure in the classrooms are going to be a little bit different, uh, but at the same time, they will be able to be in the building. Um, but we also need your your honesty, uh, not only when you're filling out those daily reports uh, and wellness check forms, but just your commitment that if your child is symptomatic in any type of way, uh, do not send them to school. Um, again, you know, the, the success of this plan is really contingent on the, the, the commitment of the parents, um, as well as the adults in the building. So without that, if a student is symptomatic and comes to the building um, and that form is, is not necessarily truthful, uh, then we're all put at, at risk. So in this partnership, your truth, your, your, your honesty, your transparency um, is key in, it, in its success. Um, and, you know, there's, again, we're, like everything that we do here, we're transparent. The students were dying to get them back in the building, but it's going to be different. Um, it's going to definitely be different. It will be successful once we are all partnered in this system. Um, so I think we've answered over 50 something questions. I'm sure that there'll be questioning, questions popping up after the fact. Feel free to email anyone that you see on the screen. Uh, first, uh, we'll give Ms. Simmons a break. Uh, myself or, or the two APs at first, um, and then we'll filter it out for her. But at the same time, we're here to support you. Thank you so much this evening for joining us. Um, we're really, really looking forward to, to getting some folks in this building. It's cavernous without anybody in here. It's, it's, we lose an energy, um, and, and, and we need to, to get our steps in. So. Thank you so much. Um, have a great evening, Ms. Ms. Uh, Mr. O'Neill, Ms. McEnany, parting words, or Ms. Simmons? Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great rest of the evening. Thank you. And more importantly, uh, have a great holiday season. This will be the last parent meeting for this year. Uh, 2020 is going out like a bull, and hopefully 21 comes in like a lamb. Um, but at the same time, again, we look forward to everybody coming back and being successful. 
So thank you for joining us this evening. Enjoy the break. Enjoy your holiday. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're here for you. And thank you for, for, for just entrusting us with your most prized possessions. Have a great evening.